and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna go through 10 things that I stopped buying to live below my means, to save money, and to eventually be able to afford my journey to financial freedom without sacrificing much of my life quality. Let's get right into it. Thing number one is books. Now, before you think that books are never a waste of money because they give you knowledge and knowledge is power, I agree. But also, at least from my experience, there are a lot of books that do not provide a lot of value. And way too often in the past, I've bought a book only to notice pretty soon after that there's not gonna be a lot of value that I'm gonna be taking out of that book. So what I do now when I hear about a book that I might wanna read, I first look at the summary of the book and I do this on an app called Shortform, which I really recommend. And if I feel like that book is actually providing a lot of value and is worth buying, then I buy the book. Thing number two is first-hand things overall, especially clothes, but also things like my mic stand, things for the kitchen, home decor, all of these things that I do not need to buy first-hand, aka new, I buy second-hand, or at least I try to buy second-hand. Obviously you can't, or you shouldn't probably do this with everything, there are still a lot of things that I buy new, but if it's something that's not gross and also totally fine to buy secondhand, I buy secondhand. Whether that's in a thrift clothing store or online on eBay, which is often so much cheaper and usually not that much worse because sometimes people just get rid of their things pretty quickly. And also, to be honest, my favorite clothes that I've been wearing for years i think 90 percent of them are or used to be used clothes i mean now they're obviously used because i used them but i bought them secondhand already so not only am i still using them but also they saved me a lot of money back then when i bought them but of course i do not always buy secondhand clothing for example but if i do buy new things i try to not buy fast fashion anymore because so often especially if you want to save money at least that's the case for me i'm thinking i should save money when buying something so i'm gonna buy the cheap stuff which is not always the best thing to do because at least in german there's that saying if you buy cheap you buy twice or something and that is so often the case because first of all the cheap stuff often breaks a lot quicker than the expensive stuff and second it usually doesn't look as good so you get sick of it at least for me that's the case so often when i buy a cheap piece of clothing i maybe like it for one or two or three times and then i notice that it's actually looking cheap and then I start wearing it and then it's just in my closet not being used aka that money is totally wasted and that is probably also one reason why I love my secondhand clothes so much because many of these secondhand clothes are very very high quality clothes but even if I need something new I try to not go to the you know forever 21 kind of stores to buy even a thing like a basic t-shirt or underwear you know things that you maybe want to have new but go for the high quality options thing number four is regular tickets at least not before checking if there is a cheaper option and with tickets i mean tickets for traveling for trains for flights for hotels but also for things like the movies or an event a concert because so often there is a way to find a cheaper ticket either because there is a kind of special ticket available because you're a student or because there's an early bird ticket but if not then there are so many apps nowadays that help you find cheaper options than just the regular prices on the websites of the event or the travel site or whatever. And one of these apps is TrainPal, who are very kindly sponsoring today's video. TrainPal is an app with which you can save a lot of money on train tickets within Europe and the UK. And the way this works is that first, they find the cheapest prices for you. Second, they help you to split tickets. And or third, they give you vouchers. And all of that without any booking fees whatsoever. And for example, if you live in London, you can link the app to your Oyster card and save up to 30% during peak times. But if you don't live in London, you can still save a lot of money by buying your rail card through the TrainPal app. And also in the app it shows you where you've been traveling to, including all the fares that you've been spending, which helps a lot if you are tracking all of your spendings. And that saving money is available for everybody, but you can save even more by using my code hana 7 which will save you 20% off a rail card and 5% off UK train tickets. But like I said, if you don't live in the UK or are not planning on traveling to the UK, but are located in Europe or traveling to Europe, this app in general is a very easy way to save some money when traveling. So thank you so much to Trainpool for sponsoring this video. Thing number five is kind of related to the travel thing and that is souvenirs. 
And while I am a big fan of celebrating memories of past cool experiences and souvenirs tend to, you know, do that very often, at least from my experience, we buy stuff because we're somewhere and we're bored or we think that we need that little figure and we're gonna look at it and remember the nice vacation we had. So often it's just a waste of money because we have those figures standing there and they clutter our home, but we never actually look at them, let alone re-experience the vacation we had. But instead, what I much rather do is look at photos because that actually helps you to, you know, remember the vacation and remember all the good times you had. And I think they're the best souvenirs there are, unless the souvenir is actually something that I can use. For example, this little thing here, it's a Statue of Liberty. Liberty, Liberty, as you can probably tell, but also it is a bottle opener. And I'm actually using that a lot because, you know, it's my bottle opener now, but it's also a Sage of Liberty, aka a souvenir from New York, which I miss very much every day. And also it's actually three things in one because it's also a magnet. So it's also actual decor. Okay, that doesn't really count as a whole second thing because, you know, the souvenir thing is also decor, but it's at least two things in one. So for this kind of stuff, I do make exceptions, but in general, I try to not buy souvenirs because I feel like it's just a waste of money and it clutters my home. Thing number six is a car. So I used to have a car, which was already a very cheap option because it was my mom's old one. But even then, even though I didn't have to pay anything to get the car, there were still a lot of maintenance costs because I had to get it fixed now and then, I had to pay gas, and I did not really need it because I live in a big city where there's a lot of public transportation options and there's a thing called my legs and my bike. So there are a lot of cheaper and healthier options to move around the city. And this is especially the case if you would buy an expensive car which you can do maybe if you have the money and you really think that a fancy car brings you a lot of value. But if not, which I think it's not the case, at least the money having, because otherwise you would not be watching this video, I suppose, don't buy the fucking expensive car. If you want a fancy car, buy a used car. If you need a car, buy a cheap used car. But if possible, don't buy a car, buy a bike or just walk or use public transportation. Thing number seven, home decor. Now, I do think it is very important, at least to me, to have a nice home, which I love. I do not think that I need 10 different vases or another color of candles every time I go to a store where they have a lot of nice candles. The other day I was at that store, Flying Tiger, which makes you feel so happy because they have happy music on there and they have so many nice little looking things where you just feel like you need all these things in order to feel that happy when you're home, which sounds like I don't feel happy at home. Usually I do, but you know what I mean? It's basic marketing psychology, store psychology, and it works so well. And I, every time I go to that store, I really have to convince myself that I do not need these things. And I still, you know, get weak sometimes, but usually I don't buy unnecessary home decor anymore unless I really need something. But then again, I try to get it secondhand, especially on flea markets, because especially home decor, I think it's very easy to get incredibly cheap at flea markets, because usually a vase there is like two bucks, maybe five bucks tops. And also it's not only cheap, it also very often is very cool stuff that you can find at a flea market. Number eight is sales shopping. So the psychology behind sales is basically to get people to buy things that they would not have usually bought. If there's something that I actually knew that I wanted to buy, and I know it's gonna be on sale, maybe in the end of the summer or on Black Friday, I might wait until that sale and then buy it for cheaper. But I'm not going shopping just because there is a summer sale. Because even if something is 50% off, you're still paying the 50% of that price on top of what you would have usually spent if it's something you would not have usually bought. So I try to not get myself influenced by that big sale sign anymore. Number nine is treatments, especially beauty treatments. And while I am really looking forward to the day where I have so much money that I can just afford to get my facial every week and get my hair done, I don't know, every other month and my nails done whenever they need to be done. For now, I'm not doing that because that stuff is so expensive. And also this is something that does not impact my quality of life that much because my nails for example i still like to have pretty nails but i just do them myself i don't like to do that myself but otherwise it would cost me at least 50 bucks every two weeks to get them done the way that i want them to be done and a facial obviously is not necessary a massage obviously it's not necessary i love that stuff don't get me wrong but for now where i'm trying to live below my means i try to avoid treatments that are not 
necessary. Thing number 10 is fresh berries. Now, honestly, not only berries, but especially berries, I rarely get fresh because the frozen version of it is usually a lot cheaper and also better in the sense that it doesn't go bad as quickly. And also most often in frozen fruits and vegetables, there are still a lot more vitamins than in the fresh ones because the fresh ones usually lay in the supermarket for days while the frozen ones usually get frozen right after being harvested. And this is something I've been doing for years now, to be honest. And while I still love my fresh berries, especially and also sometimes fresh vegetables and that kind of stuff, I try to get as much frozen fruits and veggies as possible. For example, for my morning overnight oats or my yogurt bowl, I can totally use frozen berries. And for my veggie stir, I can also totally use frozen broccoli, which not only is cheaper but also a lot more comfortable because I don't have to cut and wash the broccoli but I can just take the package from the freezer and put it in the pan which I love because I'm a very lazy cook but I don't want to deprive myself of joy so I do get fresh berries for example fresh strawberries are one of my favorite things in the world when they are in season and I think this is a mindset money saving mindset that at least for me has worked the best because I still want to enjoy things, I still want to spend the money I do have on the things that really bring me joy or value. But if it's not necessary, if it's just because I'm being influenced by marketing psychology or because it's something I buy out of habit or because I'm lazy, that's not worth it. So I think it's very helpful to find the sweet spot between saving money but also treating yourself in order to make it sustainable to live below your means or on your rather small means. If you want to know how I budget and save money in general, have a look at this video right here. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. That really helps me out so much. And I will see you in my next video.